everybody, uh, David Foster here, and we are at Orange County Choppers, and today I'm talking to Paul Tuttle Sr. and Mikey Tuttle Jr., or just Mikey? Senior. Senior? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to be talking about a little bit of the history of Orange County Choppers, uh, some things you guys probably don't even know. So first of all, what year was uh, OCC created? 1999. 1999? Uh, it actually started out of my basement originally. Um, I had a house in Montgomery, and um, you know the first, the first, I think the first three bikes that we built uh, were downstairs in my basement. That's how it started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are any of those bikes still around here? No, no. I've I've uh, I've seen a few uh, of my bikes down in uh, Daytona, uh, maybe four or five years back, but that's quite some time. Yeah. And how, do you remember that when it started? Not really. I was still doing iron work. Oh, were you? Yeah. How old were you? 22, 23? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Where was the first shop? The first shop was, uh, uh, was below my steel shop that I had um, in Rock Tavern, New York. And is that still there? That is still there, yeah. Yeah. How and when did you get discovered by uh, a network to start building on, on a show? You know, I, I think it was around 2001, um, we were approached by uh, Pilgrim Films, uh, Craig Pelligian, um, and they asked us to do a one-hour one pilot at, uh, at, uh, in Laconia uh, in building a bike. Uh, they were looking for uh, a builder on the East Coast because Jesse already had done a, a, a show on the West Coast, which was successful. Jesse James. Yes. Yeah, Jesse James. They wanted to do find somebody on the East Coast, and we were just basically starting um, back then. I had a few dealers and and wanted to keep it pretty small, but they they, they were just going through uh, different websites, and basically they seen a picture of me and they said, "Go, we'll talk to this guy." But se but send somebody big. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's really how it how it started. Then they gave us a call. And um, we wind up doing a one-hour one pilot. Um, that was the highest rated show on cable TV. When it aired, um, we did another pilot, which got good ratings, and then, um, and then they gave us a series. So now, was that the pilot for American Chopper? Yes, yep. the pilot was for American Chopper. And how long did that run? About 12, 12 years, years right? Yeah, about 12 years. 12 years? Yeah, nonstop. That's a long time. So now, when did you become part of the the series. Were you uh, in like the pilot? Episode, yeah, episode three, first season. Yeah. First season. First season, yeah. And what was that like? Like, you know, all of a sudden you're, you've got cameras around, people are miking you up. I mean, was that? Yeah, it was a little, it took an adjustment. Mm -hmm. I was used to doing iron work, uh, you know, and I really, I really hated doing it. <laughs> Did you see that as, this as really a way out? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. I was taking the first train out. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then it was fun, you know, you get used to the cameras like anything. And uh, we got to start doing uh, really interesting things like traveling to different bike shows and meeting people uh, right out of the gate. So I definitely enjoyed a lot more than than iron work. Right. Well, what, and what was Pounding it? Pounding steel. Yeah, Pounding yeah. steel. Yeah. What was it like to, to adjust to having cameras around all the time? Because it, like when you're just working on bikes and stuff, it's kind of a, an intimate thing. You're, you're in there, you're working, and all of a sudden you've got cameras in your face and mics and all that stuff. What was that like? I, honestly, for me, and it's pretty obvious if you watch the first show. <laughs> obvious for for me, uh, I didn't. I didn't. First of all, I didn't think they were gonna show what we filmed because it was it was pretty, it was pretty raw, you know. Oh yeah. And, and especially for Discovery, yeah. Because they were like ants and bugs, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Animals and stuff. And then to, to introduce a show like that. But I think I think you know I think I forgot the cameras were there. Evidently. <laughs> And uh, so I wasn't really, most of the time I was mad anyhow, so it really didn't matter. Um, but it didn't, I, previous to that, I didn't want you to take a picture of me. Mm -hmm. Never mind be on, <laughs> being filmed all the time. But I think that once we started filming, you kind of, you kind of, it's a daily, it's a day-to-day -day thing. And you go to work and you do your job, regardless whether the camera's, 
are there or they're not there. So I think that it, after a while, you forget yeah. they're there. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, there's, there's something like when it was all new and you had the pilot come out and you first sat down and you guys watched that episode, what was it like watching yourselves on TV? <laughs> I was devastated. It was a trip. I still can't do it. Yeah, you can't. No, no. I can't. Uh, do you, why? He doesn't watch the shows. No, no I never watch the shows. And why? Yeah, is I watch probably three or four episodes. I don't know. Freaked out watching myself on TV. Yeah. Or, or I feel you know that there's better things to watch than yourself on TV. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, you, but I'm the thing is, like, myself well, but, but you're you're you do stand up comedy, you do art, you do music. No, I'm trying not to do is, is that a little bit different? Oh, that's a little different. Yeah, that's live performance. So. Right, because you don't mind being in front of... And, no. and, and do you watch your performances back? I do, but that's only to improve. Yes. Which I guess if I watched any episodes of American Chopper, I would have approved or, <laughs> or improved over the years. Uh, but seasons. I don't think... Uh, your character shouldn't have improved. You you were perfect. Though. Yeah, model... Yeah. Right? yeah. People fell in love with you. That's good. So you said it was 12 years, so that's... Is that 12 seasons? Is that how that works? So. 12 seasons. But we did, we did four or five years on TLC, right? Yep. They, but that we, was a different show, right? Well, it's Discovery. It was the same show. But they, they we, did, just... we did really well on Discovery, really well. And TLC was a dying station, so they thought we were going to be, you know, the, the savior. And the audience was totally different, so we pretty much bombed out on TLC. I mean, and we got to... this back to Discovery. We did well again. Yeah, them, you know, they didn't want to move us back to Discovery, and then they did the... the Junior, senior thing. I think is that's when they moved. That was at the end, yeah. yeah. And uh, they and then we blew the charts again with the ratings. So let's talk about the first series, uh, American Chopper. So you guys were just like thrusted into the limelight and thrusted into more or less fame. I mean, you guys were like rock stars. You really were uh, touring around. Yeah, so we went what from was... being like dirt necks to rock stars. Yeah. So what yeah. was that so like? One hell of an adjustment. Well, yeah, because you've got money yeah, flowing in. That was in. an adjustment. Yeah, now. growing pains. Because, like, I mean, there's a difference from looking for business and having to turn it away so much because you've got so much coming at you. So you, you guys had a, you know, you were like rock stars. You were living that rock star lifestyle. So what was that like, having the money and the, the fame and all well, that? Well, the money's always good. I, I, I think, though, uh, he kept all the money. <laughs> <laughs> that was part of the problem as time went on. Uh, but I think, and, and you'll probably agree with Mike, is like, one day you're this normal person or abnormal person in my case, yeah. uh, and you're an iron worker and, and you know people, you have friends and people respect you uh, for even owning the business. Mm -hmm. To what a first first uh, pilot was a little bit, you know, we went down to Daytona. It was a little bit, you know, people started lining up, but the first show of the season was was off the hook. People, there was a hundred thousand people, wow. and I think that was hard to get used to. Was like, why are all these people approaching me? Yeah, I'm just a regular guy. You know what I mean? I earn a, right. Yeah, well, You're just was, a regular yeah, it guy. A trip. It was weird. Well, and, and you were people are people are just like, you know, not that it wasn't flattering, but mm -hmm. it was it was crazy. It was an adjustment. Well, and you were talking about one day, and I was kind of shocked that you would sit there and sign like thousands of autographs in a day. And, and people, you know, people coming from all over the world to see you guys. Sure. Yeah, we used to sign like 12-hour days, 12 seven hour days a week, right? Yeah. yeah. It was you still, you still got it? Things like bike. Yeah. You still oh, got it? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I've been yeah. working out my wrists. Have you? In the meantime. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk about the, the junior versus senior uh, episodes. What was that like when they pitched that to you, that actual scenario? What did you guys think about that at first? Me personally, I didn't want to do it, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I I pretty much fought it, fought it pretty hard um, because I did I, I honestly didn't want to do it. Um, financially, we weren't doing the best, mm -hmm. so for me, it was okay, kind of like a do or die thing. You need to, you know, I was encouraged by the staff I had at the time that lied to me anyhow um, to do the show, so. Pretty much. So, so how long of a span made. was there between the last episode of Choppers to that? It's because you said that there was a financial thing happening. Is that because there was a, quite a span, or was it because you guys were just spending money like? Well, like it water? probably was a combination. <laughs> I mean, we were all spending money. We were all yeah, buying. Yeah, I think we had a, a lot of chiselers here at one point. Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah, yeah so a lot of people. Luckily, he's been able to fling the chiselers. Well, yeah, because you but, you had made a comment to me at one point. You had like a hundred employees. 
Ah, probably. How many of them you think were chiseling? <laughs> 99. Yeah, 99. So, you know, Are you the only one that wasn't? The one honest the one? employee. Uh, no, I wasn't chiseling, but you know, listen, the, the fact of the matter is we were all making tremendous salaries. We were all making yep. making tons of money. And that was, a, that was the part of the problem of the growing pains. Yes. You know, you yeah. become so big so quick that it's hard to police anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you go from, a word. You go, listen, I've always had a business, so I did fairly well. You know what I mean? Uh, maybe a, maybe a hundred thousand a year max, you know. And then you went to, you know, these these guys. I don't know. Dan didn't pay you nothing at the at the at the iron shop. You probably shop, made yeah. forty grand a year if you were maybe, lucky. Maybe if I was lucky. If you were lucky, yeah, you know, yeah. ten and bucks then, an hour. And then all of a sudden, yeah. And then all of a sudden we become rock stars, and yeah. it's like quadruple. You know, it's like you said. We had a, you know, it was a good problem, but it's like, how do we capitalize on this money? just kind of gushing in, you know? What was your favorite part about having the money? Like, what did you like most about that? Well, I, th I think for me, I worked, you know, I, I kind of was in the steel business for 28 years, kind of, you know, I started out struggling, you know, with a welder and, and a pickup truck. So, you know, your, 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 your whole thing while you do that is to, you know, is to be able to get real comfortable at some point. And so for me, all of a sudden we switch gears over here and, and it's like, holy mackerel, there's, there's an opportunity here. Well, how do I, how do I, uh, how, do, how do I capitalize on it, you know? And, and it, was, it was pretty tough to do that. Because, you know, in the steel shop, we only had the secretary upstairs, yep. right? So there was nobody, there was nobody, and, 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 I, and I had to, it was tough to figure out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, so that was probably also the hardest part of it. It was the hardest part of it. So, and who was in charge of the money? Just whoever had it? <laughs> what, well, was there somebody was, keeping track of everything and, you Well, know? <laughs> let's not talk about this too loud, the IRS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, My uh, red flag. But, you know, I guess it was me uh, in the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it was, it was, it's like Mikey said, it was a big adjustment. You know, it's like, how do we, you've got these guys that are regular guys. You know, these guys grew up in a dysfunctional home. You agree? Yeah. <laughs> he still has scars. Yeah, yeah I'm still, you know. <laughs> He's still not out, right. Yeah, noticeably. Pretty right, evident. Right. In trouble. Um, it, it just was uh, such a 360 degree turnaround in like that. Mm -hmm. it, wasn't, it wasn't a time span. It was like, boom, open the gates. Mm. And what about for you? With the money? Like, yeah, like what was it like to all of a sudden be thrusted into that, all the money and then... I'm not very big on attention. No? No, and the money I really think I had some sort of a guilt complex about, mm -hmm. so I pissed it away or gave it away. <laughs> That's why I'm still in my daddy's teeth. <laughs> He's back to... But I mean, I, you know, no regrets, baby. Now. Well, so, yeah. so now, yeah. what, when you were on top, what was, the, what was the one thing that you purchased that was like, oh my gosh, I've always wanted this, I'm gonna buy it? Mail order bride. <laughs> Russian. Where is she? <laughs> I buried her. <laughs> You're allowed to kill them if they uh, <laughs> cacti it on. Oh, sorry. No. Oh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> no uh, the one thing I bought. Um, a house. Yeah, a house should have been the wisest investment, but mm -hmm. I ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> you still have it? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I live in a little apartment. Uh, yeah. And your scion. Oh, it's fumes. And my scion. Oh, yeah, a paint yeah, shop yeah. next to it. Yeah, paint shop fumes. <laughs> Machine shop. Oh, yeah, right, right, right uh, All right, so let's go on to talk about junior versus senior. So when you agreed to do that uh, and things started started going on, what? Uh, just talk a little bit about that, like the whole experience. Well, listen, I guess a lot of it, a lot of it was entitlement, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I thought I was entitled, he thought he was entitled. And I think that was the, that was pretty much the, the gist of it or however you want to say it. And then it just escalated from there. Mm. Um, you know, it became a war, a real war. I'm, I, listen, me and my brother Paul are more alike than different. So, so he said his brother. He, what's that? Yeah, you mean your son. Um, my son, his brother. I mean. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know that was a Freudian. <laughs> you know, because it's so yep. similar. Yeah. Really, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, I, but I think that, you know, he's thick-headed, I'm thick-headed. He wasn't going to surrender. I wasn't going to surrender. I thought I was, you know, entitled a lot more than he was because the fact that I believe that, you know, I worked for 
30 something years to get to where I was and he kind of got there overnight so you know you have different ways of thinking you know you say to yourself well he doesn't he doesn't deserve that because he didn't do what I did but in reality if he didn't do what he did we wouldn't have made the money that we made mm -hmm. so like that whole like versus you know that makes it's a very negative I mean it sounds negative um, but you know, you guys both had, came from different areas, and it, and it kind of affected you differently. And especially, you were kind of stuck in the middle. So, talk yeah. about what that was like. I didn't like it. I felt like I had to be a peacemaker and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I'm past it now. You know, kill each other. I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, you know, that was always my place in the family, mm -hmm. and it, it was stressful. Like the, the peacemaker, you know? the mediator. Yeah, yeah, and then you feel bad, you feel guilty, you know, when nobody's getting along, you know, getting, getting along properly, and you know, it's just, you know, it's, well, and it's, it's so a mess. It's, and then I quit early as a result. I quit early the last season. I just uh, didn't want to be in it. Because it was get, really nasty at that point. It's one yeah. thing to have, like, falling out and yelling and arguments, things like that. And then it's another to be separate, and you're launching mm -hmm. missiles at one another, you know what right. I mean? So. And I think that the thing that I re respect about Michael is that the, the, the issues with the family that was going on, Mikey's the peacemaker. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't really want to take sides. But the thing that I think I respect is that he was making a ton of money, and he decided that he didn't want to be part be part and be caught in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. and so he left the show. And gave up the money. And yeah, and gave up gave up the money. Yeah. Now he's sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm really sorry. I should have just bit down on the leather <laughs> strap. <laughs> you started drinking whiskey or something. <laughs> he hates himself that I hate myself. He don't care. He wants to go back in the middle again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So so it became it's very clear that you guys just can't work together. I mean No, bottom bottom line is that uh, no, we can't, and, 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 and you know, we, we, we never could, you know what I'm saying? It just, uh, it probably should have ended a long time ago. You know, and again, the, you know, money's good on one hand, but it's evil on the other hand, and I think we both were looking at it as, you know, we both were making uh, pretty good money, so, you know, it, it almost, I guess, was worth banging heads until you look back at it, you know, because mm -hmm. it was... It was it was really bad for it was bad for everything you know it just uh, as a, as a family I think it hurt the, the family uh, it hurt our relationship we never had a great relationship me and Paulie even before the show mm -hmm. it was a, it was kind of almost the same we were always banging heads and whatnot but the the show compounded it it just made it that much that that much right well worse. and I think that you know the show the the producers and like that they kind of push for more of that anyway right they kind of push for the drama and well yeah yeah absolutely and you know the thing of it is there's no the only the only stake they gotten into it is getting ratings and making money also they don't care right family be damned yeah they, they don't. don't care about the family they, right. they make it seem like they do but they really don't so you know they control everything mm -hmm. so you know the junior senior thing I look like the bad guy now, was there times that I was a bad guy? There absolutely was. But there's times when I wasn't, but they did, but they would put things, edit things into it, where no matter what I did, they make me look like the bad guy. Right. And how does that make you feel now? Uh, n now or then? Well, now looking back. I, I was very angry about it. Mm -hmm. I was very angry about it. And I approached them, you know, a numerous amount of times. And basically, you know, I said, just make it a little bit even. You know, mm -hmm. don't make me look like the the bad guy all the time but you know they they own you so they can do whatever they want to do right and how did that that you already talked about kind of how that affected you but how did it sure. affect you knowing you know knowing both sides well, i don't know it was a fiasco at that point mm -hmm. yeah couldn't take it no nah? no no it's horrible so did you i mean what did you do to not be involved because you basically had to not be around either one of them or was it just you were strictly family get-togethers and stuff, nothing to do with work or shop or anything? I would anesthetize myself. Yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> no, you know, yeah, I didn't want to be around any of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, so like, looking... Looking at that whole scenario, where where are you at now with Junior? I mean, well, are you guys um, like to be totally honest? We don't have the best relationship, but we have a relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, we could go to Christmas together. We can, 
you know, I've, we've gone out to dinner. Uh, I've gone out to dinner with him and, and his wife. So, you know, it's 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 um, civil. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the, the the key thing for me, okay, the key thing for me is that if we're going to continue to have a relationship and hopefully it'll build, there's a lot of damage there. Mm. But but hopefully it'll it'll build. But the one thing that I'll never do is I'll never work with him again. Mm -hmm. And even if, you know, we've had opportunities, even if there's a lot of money on the line, I won't do it. Because right. I think the relationship, even though it's not the best, is still more important than going back to the way of the root of evil that that inevitably inevitably wound up to where we are today. Right. And that's and that's good because family is the most important thing. And how does that make you feel hearing that? I wasn't listening. No. <laughs> I was just drinking my water. <laughs> you sure thinking, when is this going to be over? No. Um, good, good. Actually, he uh, he gave a nice Christmas gift to my uh, my nephew, Paul's son. Mm -hmm. I which thought was it was a, too. Yeah, I which thought it was, it was sweet. It was special, you know? Yeah, and it was a um, Statue of Liberty bike that Paul built in die mm -hmm. cast form. You know, oh, he's cool. not old enough to ride. He's only right. two. But, uh, um, and I thought it was nice because it was something Paul made. Mm -hmm. It was something from him, you know. And now the boy can enjoy what his father created, you know. Mm -hmm. All about creation, yep. good stuff. And I, I, I the think, tight and nice. Yeah, and I think that's somewhere down the road, maybe twenty years down the road, he'll still have that as a memorial, memorial, whatever it is, mm -hmm. piece. Um, you know that he could talk to his father about. Mm -hmm. You know, because his father built that. There's none of them around anymore. I had him. I have a collection of everything through the years, so I, I, you can't get it. So I took it out of out of my uh, collection. Um, and I think Paul would probably appreciated it. His, his son's a little bit too young, but I think yeah. he appreciated it because he's probably thinking, you yeah. know, down the road there's a piece of something that he did. Right, no, sure. that's really cool. Endorsed yeah. by him. Yeah. To his son, <laughs> you know, generational thing. I thought it was nice. I was like, man. Did you tear up a little too. bit? No. No, not at all? No, I only tear up when I think about how I don't have any kids. <laughs> I don't have you anybody. Got I do have Finn. So but now that's we're another gonna, story. Yeah, we'll we'll save that for another interview. So now we're going to talk about. So you shot up to all this fame and everything, and now you're kind of struggling. So yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. So where are you now? We're in, in the toilet, in the bottom. <laughs> we're in the bowels. We're in the pits. We're in the bottom of the hole. Well, because, you know, I think a lot of people, so there's a, a huge misconception here, right? So when you, you're doing the show, you're building $100,000 bikes, right? And people think that More that's that, all, yeah. yeah, minimum probably. Yeah, and minimum. people think that that's where you are. So, you know, you're not really, those were not a common thing for you to build. I mean, they were during the show because they, the corporations wanted to have their, you know, their bike shown on the show or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that's not the majority of what you do. So now that those aren't part of the picture as much, you're actually having to do, you know, uh, what like the lower cost bikes and stuff. So, what are you doing now to keep things afloat? Well, in reality, we're doing anything that we can to stay afloat. We're working on quads, snowmobiles, uh, cars, uh, re, you know, building uh, twelve thousand dollar bikes, going to junkyard, you know, the, the barn finds, and you know spending $2,500 on a bike and and then working on it, putting it together and, you know, and selling it for twelve, you know, thirteen thousand dollars So we went from, from at one point, million dollar bikes mm -hmm. uh, for big companies down to doing, you know, listen, we do get a, a, a $80,000 bike once, once in a while, but not, you know, it's not, not like it used to be. I think that by mishandling our money mm -hmm. which I was definitely guilty of um, you know I wind up buying this big place with a huge overhead and we were doing very well then now the economy kicked out so I still have that same overhead but I don't have the influx of, of work coming in now so it's 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 a struggle mm -hmm. it's a day-to-day -day struggle well and what and how does that feel because you know you you had a lot of employees, you had to lay some guys off and stuff like that. So when, when you came to that realization that that was gonna happen, what was going through your mind? Well, listen, I, I tried to hold on as long as I could to my people because it's always been important to me because they have families and I've always felt responsible. 
So it was hard thing, you know, to take all those people in a room one at a time and lay them off that have been here for 10, 12, 14 years. It's, it, it's, it's a hard thing, but, you know, at some, if you're going to, if I'm going to stay in existence, that I had to do that. Mm -hmm. And so what, what was it like coming to that realization? I, mean, I can only say it was uh, devastating, and I think I, I prolonged it as long as I mm -hmm. could. I mean, I have been for the last three years supporting the company out of my own pocket just to keep everybody, to keep their jobs, mm -hmm. uh, hoping that, you know, we'll get to the point where, you know, we'll start building up again. And we are mm -hmm. uh, a little bit at a time, but for me to carry the additional payroll to try and get back to where we are so that, you know, at some point maybe I can bring those people back. Mm -hmm. And what do you, what was that like for you? I don't know, you know, I do feel bad for the people who were good people here, they put in a lot of time, mm -hmm. and they, you know, to lose their jobs. But it's sort of the state of uh, affairs in the country, you know what I mean? Right. It's sort of the situation that it is. But also I think with the shrinking, um, he lost a lot of people who were here uh, strictly the chisel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? you, you know, you get rid of the, the, the bag, fleas, the sleaze bag. bags pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I think that's sort of a blessing. Yeah. I think so. It's, a, it's the, uh, it's the positive end of it anyway. So I'm, so I'm sure there were some that were pretty pretty angry. Well, I think, I think the company outgrew everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that were in place, the company outgrew. And, you know, for me, you know, uh, I'm a talent. So go to England, go, you know, so... It's hard for me, it was hard for me to keep an eye on, on everything, and I trusted the people that were in place here. And like I said, the place outgrew them, and you know, there should have been changes made that weren't, and I had trust in people that I shouldn't have. So now you've got Christian, Phil, Nick, Christian, Jason, Jason, Jason. yep. So pretty um, much a, a skeleton yeah. crew. Yeah, and uh, you know, it, it it's 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 you know like you're not you're not in much better situation because now everybody's playing a different role. Mm -hmm. You know he's got five roles to play. You right. know he's got to do this, he's got to do that. Christian's got to be the parts guy. He's got to be the mechanic. You know what I'm saying? He's got to be the shop foreman. He's got to be you know everybody's got five or six jobs to do, and now that becomes very difficult too. What are your goals to get things stable again? Like you know, I've been going to Europe, and we're pretty popular over there in Europe. And when I went over there, when we went over there, so we started doing some business deals over there. One of them was uh, for the Harley Davidson dealerships. We met some people over there, and what we're doing is starting a parts line, mm -hmm. which I think is a good future. It's just I'm gonna have to get there. The other thing is next month we're going there, and Italy. we. We're going to Italy. Verona, yeah. Yep. Yeah, Verona, and we're launching a um, a, uh, a clothing line through all out through Europe, which which I think is is going to be uh, big. So there's, I mean, I could probably go, but there's multiple opportunities right mm -hmm. now. You're diversifying. Diversifying, yeah. Um, but again, we have to make it. The runway's running running out. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So we we have to make it to that point. <laughs> to get back, your your uh, under your mattress is getting it more empty. Yeah. You're having to lift it up oh, higher it, to it get it in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to go with the crowd crowdfunding model? You know, part of the part of the problems in the past was kind of like I was talking about, and not you know making you the bad guy, and you know um, not having full creative control, which to me is very important. Um, if me and him want to blow up something, we're going to blow it up, you know what I mean? Right. But I think, I think, that, I think that you can give the audience more mm -hmm. than you could with a regular show. Right. Because now you can listen to the audience. You have a regular show, you have restrictions, you have to kind of like, um, you sort of, uh, you have to do whatever, whatever, right. the, yeah, whatever the network Well, and, and they can make you look like a bad guy and you can't do anything about it. Well, I think, I think, I think it's important. I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. Maybe <laughs> now he can make himself look like a bad guy. <laughs> like a what? You can make yourself look like a bad guy if you want. Yes. Yeah. I don't really care. Um, <laughs> no, I forgot. Oh, ah, shit. Uh, no, I got it. This came back. Right. Good. Um, I think what's important is that we have so many fans that, is, that ask for certain things. They're begging for the show to come back on. But I think that if you're able to have 
uh, control of your own your content. Content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could listen to what your fans are saying. Hey, we need. You know, we want to see blowups. We want to see uh, Mikey with his clothes off. Well, maybe not. No. They've already seen that. Skip that. <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying? It, it gives us control. So, <laughs> yeah. So why should Shit. why should they like? What could you say to the all the fans that have been around all these years? Like, what do you have to say to them? Well, I mean, I. I I personally can say that um, if you contribute, we'll give you more. Right? Well, if that's yeah, 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 yeah. More or less, that's that's or, you know. Or contribute it, so we it, can it, give you more. Everything, right. everything, everything. Um, there's, a, there's a fee for everything that you do. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, if you're um, if you're going to be doing uh, a show, you need production company. You need all. So that's where those funds will go into uh, helping us to keep creating. Uh, new shows, and right. that's really what we what we want to do. Well, and one of the differences is, like, if you look at a production company coming in here, you're looking at you know seventy five thousand dollars minimum to do a show, whereas yeah. doing it yourself, you're going to be able and, to. And save then it has that to cost. be edited, so yep. it's it's a, it's a pretty big it's a big expense. Um, you know, I'm, if if you could really spread it out where people don't have to spend a lot of money, uh, it, it's even better. You know, I, I'd rather see volumes of people. You yeah. know, spending you know uh, whatever it is, I don't really, bucks or yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Then you know, it's not a lot of people that are going to say, "Here's a thousand bucks." Right. But there are other people out there, but I think that the way we got it set up, there's rewards and everything that for the people that are investing, they can feel like they're part of it, right? Yeah. Well, they, well, there's there's different programs that we have uh, to offer back into their investment. Mm -hmm. So, what should they expect from the new show? I mean, we're talking about breaking the fourth wall. We're talking about blowing stuff up. I mean, it's pretty much it's pretty much now you're going to have the freedom to, like you said, give them what they want. So what can they expect? Just you guys, is it more like the American Chopper Raw? I don't know. Feel? Would it be wrong to ask for requests from people as to what no, they would no, like? I think, no, no, I that's, think, that's, that's I, think, right? yeah, huh. I think we have to have a direct, like when we sit down, we do a creative. Yeah. Right? So I think, yeah, I think we, ha we, we, we do our own creatives, which is, you know, we're not told you, you have to do this. Mm -hmm. Or you have to do that. So I think that, like what he said, that's that's important that we are able to do that. So, you know, if you guys would like to support the show, uh, go to patreon.com forward slash Orange County Choppers, and you're going to see all of the rewards there. They're, you're going to get behind-the-scenes content. You're going to get videos, exclusive videos, pictures. Uh, get to talk to Mikey and Nick get to talk to senior, I mean, all kinds of cool stuff. So make sure you go there, patreon.com forward slash Orange County Choppers. Thank you very much. This has been Mikey Tuttle and Paul Tuttle Sr. Uh, and we'll see you soon. Say guys. Be there. Be there or? Or die. Be there. Oh, do it. Be there. Be there. You got to do it in unison. Oh, yeah. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Be there. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday.